starts both in, again against England at Twickenham. How special is that for preparing it? Yeah, it's uh, very special, obviously. Um, you know, it's one of the ones that you highlight once you see it at the start of the year. And um, look, as a team, we just want to finish this uh, very strong against a, a good Eng a good England side. Um, and to play Twickenham is obviously awesome um, anytime you can. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I agree. It's special. Uh, we don't get to do it often. Um, so every opportunity we get um, to play at Twickenham against, uh, like Rick said, a really good English team. Um, we look forward to them. TJ, you were, you were playing in the last game that was here in 2018 and you were involved in a kind of pretty controversial into that, into that game. Do you remember that much of that at all? Yeah, um, it's a good call. Really, <laughs> <tried off. laughs> yeah. really good call. Yeah, it was good eyes from the ref, I thought. <laughs> and you had to see that Corny was a little bit offside. Yeah. Charged my kick down. Say Bears a little bit of a <laughs> conversation <laughs> as well. I think Underwood ends up around inside of him. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, some of these test matches go down to um, big players like that and uh, been on the wrong end of some of those players too. So uh, we're fortunate that day. So hopefully uh, we can execute and uh, they don't get through and charge a kick of mine down and put us under pressure like that. Ever again. Ever again. <laughs> TJ, also, you're obviously also involved in, in that semi-final in Yokohama, which must seem like a long time ago now. But you, the All Blacks don't lose very many matches, but those that you do lose, does it, does it hurt even more because of that? Is that something you still think about or has it been completely forgotten about? I don't think about it anymore now. Um, it definitely does hurt losing test matches, uh, especially big ones like that. Um, losing semi-final um, to any team hurts. Um, but for us, um, we're, we're about this job, about... Um, learning from things that have happened in the past, but if we're still holding on to things that happened in um, 19, I think we're um, holding ourselves back from growing, to be honest. One of the sort of iconic images of that night was Owen Farrell's face as he stared at the hacker, and I asked him about it yesterday. He says it's also often misconstrued as a smirk. He wasn't smirking. He was just thinking, how good is this? I'm in a World Cup semi-final against the All Blacks. It doesn't get much better than this. When you were leading the hacker, were you aware of that at the time? Do you even spot the faces of the opposition when you're doing the hacker? Um, yeah, you definitely spot them, um, but it's, like, I don't see it as a sign of disrespect or anything, even if it was a smirk, I, I, you just said it wasn't, but even if it was, like, people are entitled to respond um, the way they want to respond, and um, there's been numerous different responses towards huckers that I've led and huckers that I've been a part of, um, and for me it's, it's more about them than it is about us, it's them wanting to show their unity and, and how they, uh, I suppose, lay down their challenge, and I'm all for it. Eh? If we could just ask both of you as well, just to pay tribute to Brody and what an achievement it is to reach 100 caps, especially in his position, which is such an attritional position, to have that longevity. Yeah, it's obviously awesome. Um, not the, who was the first Bears, I think, as part of oh, Bears and Nuggies 100th, so another 100th to be a part of is something um, very special. And like you said, you know, a position like his, um, right in the engine room, um, right in the middle to notch up 100 for your country is um, no mean feat and I'm sure um, he's as proud of and his family is as proud of himself as the team are so um, yeah we'll look out to go do justice out there on Saturday. Yeah it's, a, it's an awesome thing what he's achieved um, he's had a few injuries in that that have um, I guess stopped him from getting to this milestone um, sooner uh, but he's, he's an awesome man for our team for our environment um, and for him to be able to do that at Twickenham is, is pretty special too. TJ, a couple of weeks ago you weren't even in the squad, now you're playing the last two tests of the year. How, how do you feel about your own sort of personal stature in, in this team and, and just coming back in and, and playing two big, big games to finish the year? Um, yeah, I'm excited to play. It's, uh, it's an environment that you want to be a part of and when given the opportunity, um, you want to make the most of it. Um, it's been awesome getting back and mingling with the boys and. Um, just building those relationships and spending time together um, that I haven't had to do or haven't been able to do um, earlier on this year. And that's probably the um, the biggest thing for me that you have to get used to. Like rugby is rugby. Um, in my eyes, like if you get the opportunity to play in any team, if you understand how you want to play and you understand the dynamics of a team, you can influence and have impact in any environment. Um, so I knew that the rugby was going to be okay. It was the uh, spending the time with the boys, um, making sure that I... Um, put the effort in to, to be there for our connections and stuff like that, and I, I really enjoyed that time. You kind of touched on it, I think we talked the other week, but is it pretty cool knowing that, you know, in this day and age of professional rugby, you've played 
club rugby, provincial rugby, super rugby, and all blacks in the same season. Like not many people can say that they've they've done that and committed to a full club, club season. <laughs> it is. Not many can say that. Right? Yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool. Um, as well as winning the Rampillar Shield, you said. Yeah, and Jubilee Cup. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, it's been a pretty. Um, cool journey this year. Like there's um, obviously been some ups and downs, but the journey itself has been um, something that I've really enjoyed, and uh, it'll be a, a year in my career that I'll look back on fondly. I think. Rico, um, you lined up against Manu uh, mm. this weekend for the first time. I know it was the thorn in the All Blacks in 2012 and 2019. I just wondered what you're expecting from him um, on Saturday's opposite number. Oh, um, yeah, it's obviously a big challenge, but um. um Sort of just expecting his best, really, because um, that's what we're coming off on Saturday, and um, yeah, I wouldn't expect any anything less. Have you spoken to any of the, the former players, guys who have lined up against him in 2012? Because obviously it was quite an infamous performance in 2012, where he handed off Dan Carter and Aaron Smith. I just wondered if you sought them out for any advice or anything ahead of facing him this weekend. Uh, nah, nah, no, nah, I, I haven't um, delved that that far back. Um, oh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah was. I, th I probably was watching that game. I just can't remember. But um, yeah, look, I'm just I'm just excited for the challenge. And and like I said, um, I know he's a quality player. Um, so I'm expecting nothing but his best.